after that city, a very famous city on the northern coast of French Guiana. Uh, the International Space Station is actually just about to pass uh, almost directly over the launch site in French Guiana as we speak, and we'll be again switching our broadcast uh, in about two minutes down to uh, Ariane Spas and uh, the broadcast of the launch of the Ariane 5 rocket and the Albert Einstein spacecraft loaded with more than seven tons of supplies and fuel for the residents of the International Space Station. With everything uh, proceeding on track for an on-time launch and an instant launch window uh, for the uh, Ariane 5 rocket from Kourou, we're about uh, 45 seconds away from uh, switching to French Guiana for the Ariane Spas broadcast uh, of the activities down there and the final minutes uh, until the launch. Uh, as we said before, at the time of launch, the International Space Station will be passing 258 uh, statute miles over the northwest corner of the Ukraine near the border of Belarus and Poland. So far, so good. The weather holding uh, down in uh, Karoo on the northern coast of South America. And so with that, uh, we will switch our broadcast uh, to uh, Ariane Spas, We'll be coming back uh, periodically throughout the next hour and a half. But for now, let's go to Karoo, French Guiana, and the launch of Ariane 5 and the Albert Einstein. Everybody and welcome to Kourou, where today we're launching the fourth ATV, the Automated Transfer Vehicle. That's the cargo ship that'll bring supplies to the astronauts on the International Space Station. Joshua Jampel here with Simon Thompson from Ariane Space. Hi. Hello and welcome. And on board today's Ariane 5 ES configuration, we have the Albert Einstein ATV-4. We're going to talk about the ATV, we'll talk about Ariane 5, and lots, lots more, so don't go away. To get us started, some opening words from Stefan Israel, chairman of Ariane Space. Welcome to the Guyana Space Center, Europe's spaceport, for launch of the ATV Albert Einstein, the fourth ATV launched by Ariane Space. For the first time, an Ariane 5 ES will put into orbit a payload of more than 20 tons. I would like first to salute Astrium, our prime, who is the prime contractor for the Ariane 5 ES launch vehicle and also for the ATV, along with European industry. This ATV Albert Einstein has three missions. It will bring supplies to the ISS and to the astronauts on board. It will bring modules that will enable it to improve its performance and scientific research. And it will also allow the International Space Station to reboost its orbit. It's a very important mission, and I'd like to thank ESA, who has always put its trust in us for launch of the ATV fleet, and also to the ESA member states who committed to the ISS program with faithfulness and with strength. It's a great program in international cooperation. This project goes beyond the borders of Europe because, as you know, the United States, Japan, and Russia also participate. The ATV arrived in Kourou in September. We're in June, so we're at the end of a long campaign and I'd like to thank the teams who have dedicated their efforts to this mission and to the ATV. For them it's a real crowning of an achievement this evening. 
In just a few minutes, the Ariane 5 will put in orbit the ATV Albert Einstein. I wish you all a very pleasant launch. Today's mission, the 69th Ariane 5 to fly and the 213th Ariane since the program began back in 1979, and a record 20.2 tons, the heaviest load ever for an Ariane 5. We're coming to you live, as we always do, from the Jupiter Mission Control Center, the nerve center of the space base. This is the Ariane Space High Command you're looking at. Stefan Israel, you saw. Louis Laurent, Senior VP for Programs. With him on the ESA side is Antonio Fabrizzi, one of the fathers of the Vega program. Edward Perez, who's the Senior Technical Officer at uh, Ariane Space, the living technical memory of all the flights, if I can say, and Patrick Loire, who's the head of the Ariane Space facilities here in Kourou. ESA is responsible for the mission tonight, as we mentioned. A word now from ESA's Director General, Jean-Jacques Dordain. Good evening, another very important event for ESA, but also for the partners of the International Space Station, since this launch of ATV-4 is bound to the ISS. It is the heaviest payload to be launched by Ariane 5, and also the most sophisticated one ever made by ESA. It carries to the station more than six tons of cargo, benefiting to the crew, in particular to Luca Parmitano, who flew last week to ISS. So we'll see the encounter of an ESA astronaut and an ESA vehicle at the station next 15 June. It is the last but one launch of an ATV. We stopped the production of ATV so as to be able to prepare the future with new developments but using ATV heritage. And this is on this basis that we are developing the service module of the Orion capsule from NASA. This is the first time that ESA is on the critical path of a crew transport vehicle that will go beyond low orbit. For the time being, rendezvous with this ATV4 launch. Enjoy the launch. Europe's space base covers a lot of ground. We're roughly the size of Singapore. You can see the green status panels again. A lot of activities needed to ensure the launch of an area. Well, what these panels tell us is the readiness status of the main systems that are involved in today's launch. The readiness of the ATV, the readiness of a launch system, that's the launcher and the pad. The readiness of a range, things like telemetry, radars and the weather. All the needed ground facilities and they all must be green, ready for launch. And this evening they are. We go basically when they're all green, when three elements are aligned, the satellites, the launcher, and the launch base. If all those are ready, then we can go. The panels are a real-time summary of all the different launch services provided by the base. We check them from time to time during the first part of the mission before liftoff. We're going to take a look at the launch vehicle in just a moment. Nice shot of Ariane standing on the pad. If you're unfamiliar with uh, the Ariane 5, she stands in two parts. They call them composites, total of 50, 50 meters tall. The lower composite containing the, comprising the two solid rocket boosters, you can see them on either side of the core stage, and the core stage, the main cryogenic stage. That's the lower composite. Moving to the upper composite, it's a whole different system. Yes, we have the, the EPS, uh, the storable propellant upper stage. It has a height of uh, 3.4 meters, total mass of 1.3 tons. It burns liquid propellant. And also the fairing, 17 meters high, 2.5 tons. And this evening, we're flying a new system, a horizontal separation system, 3 plus. We'll describe each of these uh, systems in turn as it is functioning, so you can follow Ariane, and she makes her mission across Hello. the Atlantic. Also part of the upper composite, we actually have the ATV itself. With a total mass of 20 tons, 10 tons of this is cargo to be delivered to the International Space Station. We also have the separation and distan distancing module. This providing the mechanical and the electrical interface between the ATV and the Ariane. More of this uh, a little bit later. As you can see, the mass 20 tons, as was mentioned, that is a record for an Ariane 5. Moving back inside Jupiter, other key players involved making the mission happen tonight. You saw the flight directorate. This time we're on the customer side. The Ariane Space Program Manager tonight for the ATV, Pierre-Yves Bertin, you'll be hearing from him in a moment. He works side by side with his customer during the preparation campaign of the launch. Now you work in the Environment and Structures Department 
Simon, what's their role in this launch? Well, that's right. We are a team of about uh, 10, or so, 10 or so people, and we follow all these missions to ensure the overall flight worthiness of the passenger this evening, the ATV. So in a technical function of working with the customers, we look at all of the engineering factors that support the readiness or the qualification of the satellites, the passengers, the ATV in this instance, for launch. So we look at all the, environment, all the environmental aspects, the dynamics, Back with more in a minute, but we're going to hear from Pierre-Yves Bertin just now, who will give us a closer look our first at the ATV. And while uh, Ariane Spass is presenting uh, that feature uh, for the next minute or so, we're back here at uh, Mission Control in Houston, where the flight control team is uh, standing by for the liftoff of the Ariane 5 rocket just 11 and a half minutes from now. Uh, about three hours and 20 minutes uh, ago, the uh, Vulcan main stage engine, that first stage engine, was chilled down to the proper temperature uh, to provide uh, the right uh, cryogenic uh, temperature for the propellants loaded into the first stage, and about an hour and 10 minutes ago, a final check of connections was made between the launcher and uh, the telemetry tracking and command systems that are used uh, to track the Albert Einstein all the way up to its preliminary orbit and then on its way to the International Space Station. So we'll go back now to Kourou inside 11 minutes until launch, everything appearing to be on track for an on-time launch of the Albert Einstein Automated Transfer Vehicle. Adjustments and those evolutions coming up in a moment. Other key players on the satellite side, these are the satellite mission directors. Yes, and uh, they are responsible for the ATV. They decide if the ATV is ready for launch. They follow the whole campaign and give the OK at the key stages during its preparation. Tonight represents a long period of work for many of these people. They will all be very focused on the, uh, on the next events. We're lifting 20 tons, as was mentioned, the, with the ATV. Only possible, remember, with the heavy lift Ariane 5, the only commercial launcher on the market that's capable of lifting such a heavy payload. And uh, our next film uh, focuses on the launch campaign, where you will see how the Ariane 5, the ES configuration, has been put together for today's mission. Parts of Ariane 5 built in Europe crossed the Atlantic by ship. They arrived in Kourou and were taken to the space base. Work began in the Launcher Integration Building. The two solid boosters made here in French Guiana were then brought to the Launcher Integration Building for assembly. The vehicle equipment bay housing the two computers was mated atop the main stage. Then the storable propellant upper stage was integrated onto that. Ariane 5, complete before its passenger now, was then moved to the final assembly building May 7th. ATV-4 arrived by air last September. Its preparation was carried out in parallel with the launchers in buildings designed for this purpose. For most of its campaign, the ATV remains in two separate parts, a cargo module and a service module. Special teams tested and monitored the vital systems of both these sections in dedicated clean rooms. The ATV subsystems were fully checked to ensure their flight readiness. When these tests were done, the composites were joined. The now complete ATV was moved and filled with the propellant it will need for its mission. Teams responsible for this area and space flight authorized the beginning of the final phase of the campaign called Combined Operations. This began with transfer of the ATV from the satellite preparation buildings to the final assembly building. Ariane Space, along with customer teams, met every day to review ongoing activities and set plans for the coming days. These meetings gave the green light to make the ATV atop the Ariane 5, and this was carried out May 10th. With the ATV placed atop the upper stage, the fairing was then wrapped around it on May 24th. Then, the day before launch, Ariane 5 was rolled out on the rail track to her position on the launch pad, ready now for her mission. And the weather, you are asking. Well, you can see the skies are pretty clear. We've had a lot of rain, but uh, today things have cleared up. We should have fine shots at liftoff, maybe even see booster separation. We had a uh, minus 10 minutes, the last weather check. Simon, what's the Yes, uh, here at uh, CSG, we are on the edge of the Amazon rainforest near the equator, and we're coming towards the end of the rainy season. Recently, it has been raining a lot, but at this moment, as you say, the clouds are clear. 
There are many key people in Mission Control. One of them is the Range Operations Manager. He makes all of the key announcements during this countdown and during flight. One of those announcements is coming up in about 20 seconds. We're zooming in on him and the person he works with. This is the uh, Mission Director and Area and Space Person, Didier Saïd. Attention for the 